Hi, you've just developed the function is even um, in the previous exercise. Um, so normally I would discuss this with you, but uh, I don't now. It's a video. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to talk about uh, the theory more. So one of the questions you may have, like, does this really save time? Because in the end, maybe you think that that's the goal of uh, using these methodologies. Um, the answer is no. It will take longer to develop code. So there are three studies here. Um, so he, these are the references. But of course, take a look at the original R markdown file, uh, Q mark, Quarto markdown file, if you want to see it. Um, the, the, the reference is in full again, like now I just go through them quickly. But we see that in all cases it takes about, well, let's say 20% of extra time. Um, on the other hand, there are some effects uh, that may make it worth it. Uh, for example, 20% more tests are passing, twice as much code quality, 50% um, less code defects. So it's not about saving time, it's about getting higher quality code. So why do TDD anyways? It will make you more productive. It increases the quality of your code. So there's three studies here. Um, and there are plenty of costly program mistakes documented. Imagine space shuttles crashing or a Mars lander crashing. Um, but it also helps to shape the architecture of your project, uh, the software architecture in this case. Um, put it into better modules uh, and it works great with extreme program and CI. So extreme programming is that you take good practices and take it to the max according to some ideas of course. Uh, CI is continuous integration. I'll discuss that uh, in the next lesson. So not now, but you'll see it works together great. Another question you may have, like, all right, so I'm writing this function is even, for example, to determine if a number is even. Maybe you are tempted to write uh, an infinite amount of tests. For example, two should be even, you test that. Four is an even number, you test that as well. Six as well, eight as well, ten as well. Maybe you write a for loop in steps of two to check if the numbers are even. Or maybe you write another for loop to check if the odd numbers are not even. And that is a problem, like when you discover that there are bugs in your code, and there will be bugs in your code, especially if you're not looking for them, then some people like to write an infinite amount of code as a first initial primal response. Uh, that's a very bad idea. Um, and test-driven development puts an upper limit on this. So when you cannot break your code anymore, you're done writing tests. Sometimes you still have bugs in your code. You can't help that. You can't be blamed for that. Um, but in that case, someone can um, say, hey, if I run this code, I, I expect this test to pass. This test fails and then shares this with you so you can add it. Maybe in your GitHub repository, maybe with a pull request or those fancy techniques I'll discuss later. Um, so that's the upper limit of the amount of tests. Sometimes it feels too little, let's say like one, two, three tests to uh, determine if a function is, for example, is, is correct. You can add some tests for, let's say, documentation purposes, just to, be not su yeah, just to be super sure, but it's not being super sure. It's about, um, it's about say, well, no, for example, let's take the number is prime here. So, so a, a number is prime, for, for and that has some kind of requirements. For example, zero is not prime, one is not prime, and these are already exceptions. Minus one is not prime, that's an exception already. So you could write, and uh, probably there's one if statement that covers all these three cases. Because all numbers below two, below two are not prime. So you can get away with writing one test. Um, but you maybe want to cover the other two cases in a test as well, just to make sure, just to show to your reader that you that is prime works as expected. And so that's more for documenting purposes, not as in putting it in your documentation. You can do that as well, but Python doesn't run example code, R does. So in R, that's a good place to put that in your documentation as test cases that you show to the user. Um, but the general rule should be 
until you cannot break your code anymore. Or if you really want to be a bit more extensive by for adding like document documentation purposes. So the next exercise is to write the function is old. Also here, create a GitHub repository called is old. Share the URL of your repository with the teachers. Develop a function called is old. Uh, in a test driven development way and try to be exemplary again. Again, the purpose is not to write a function that is that you develop very quickly. It's about getting into the habit of using test driven development. And we'll take a look at the repository history after the break. If you're done with this, there's a new exercise is probability. So it um, but before we get into it, is old. So you already see that hey, but Richard, we already wrote a function is even. So maybe we can take a shortcut. I encourage you to take that shortcut. I encourage you to um, to try to be exemplary, but if you really want to, 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 to try to take a shortcut, do so and, and observe what happens. If you're done with is old, write is probability. So I let you work on that now. Um, and I'll put the video uh, of me doing this uh, online here as well. Um, th I wish you good luck in developing this function is old. And I see you after the break. Bye.